There has got to be a way that I can shoot film to make it look like Band of Brothers. It just has to be. So guys, if you haven't realized or guessed by now, watching Band of Brothers, it's one of my favorite TV shows. I'm a big World War II buff, um, and much like Saving Private Ryan, it has this look to it. And from the research what I've done, both, uh, well, I'm not 100% sure about Saving Private Ryan, but Band of Brothers was filmed using the Kodak Vision 3 stocks. So all the tungsten stocks, 200, 500, and 800, which we can get our hands on these days in the form of Cinesteel, which is great. But upon further research, the look and how they've created that sort of, um, you know, really faded, uh, surreal look, it's something called bleach bypass, which I'd never heard of before, but I've seen, when you punch it into Google, everything that comes up is just Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials on how to do it, but that's not what we want to do. We want to create the actual look. So from the research, what I've found is you shoot your film, uh, and I'm going to try and get some of the Cinesteel film today. You shoot the film, you develop it with your color chemicals, except you use a developer, and then that's it. Instead of using the Blix, which is the bleach, you know, hence bleach bypass, we forget about that and instead you use your black and white stop bath and fixer and then your stabilizer for your color chemicals after. And essentially what it does is it, it by not using the bleach, it leaves the, some of the silver on the film on the film um, and it essentially gives you like a half color, half black and white look, which is how they achieved this. So I'm really, really keen to try it today. I'm gonna to go and get a roll of of Cinesteel uh, from one of the local shops if they have any in stock, fingers crossed. We're gonna shoot that and then I'm gonna pull out my color chemicals, which I haven't used for a while, develop it and grab the black and white stuff and I wanna really see if I can recreate that look on the actual film itself. No, no faking it with Photoshop and Lightroom stuff, actually making the negative look that cool. So I just went to my local lab and all they had was Cinesteel 50D which, hey, it's still Kodak Vision Film, so I'll give it a shot, but $24.95 Australian dollars, like, oh, Perth can, can suck a fat one. I tell you, everywhere in Perth, the film is a rip-off. But let's go and shoot this so we can actually try the bleach bypass process. All right, guys, so I have developed, I have stopped, and I'm just got some fixer in the tank now, but... Let's just, fingers crossed, another couple minutes and we'll see if we've, we've got an image. Um, I don't know what that negative's gonna look like. Fingers crossed. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Okay, let's see if this worked and, oh, oh. It did. Look at all those clear negatives. Check that shit out, everyone. Oh, man. They look really clean as well. I mean, the color's a bit funky, but, oh, sweet. All right, guys, so I'm hanging the film out to dry and we have images, which is great. Now, as you can see here, oh, let me fix this bloody shutter. Hold on, guys. Where is it? There we go. Okay, no more bloody stupid shutter. Okay, so for comparison, if I can get close enough, this negative here, this is some Cinesteel 50D that I've shot previously, and if I just put the negatives close together, you can, you know what, you can't tell a massive difference, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, the ones where I've done the bleach bypass, the, the orange um, tint to the film is much, much more prominent than this other one. Um, but hey, there's nothing else to do now except let it dry, and then I'll take it to my lab tomorrow, tomorrow's Monday, and I'll get them to scan it, and then we'll check back in and we'll see if it worked, if we've got that color palette, that look, uh, that Saving Private Ryan and, and Band of Brothers have, so fingers crossed. Hey guys, we're back. Do I look happy? Because I am happy, because it worked. It actually worked. Um, Pretty blown away. Uh, it worked 
Ish, I definitely made one mistake, which we'll get into later, uh, but it worked. The negatives came out clear, the lab scanned them, I got them back. I have images that look pretty damn cool. Uh, they are the, the very, mm, almost the color palette I was looking for, but I do understand where I went wrong. Um, so for next time, I can fix my mistakes. Uh, but just first, before we get into it, I'm just gonna you know tell you guys the process, obviously. So for, <clears throat> excuse me, the developing chemicals, Obviously, I have a Tentanol C41 developing kit, uh, which I already had, so it was a developer from that. And then the stop, sorry, stop bath. I just used my Ilfa stop from uh, my black and white chemicals. Uh, so I developed for three minutes and 15 seconds at 38 degrees, standard for color. And then uh, after the developer, I didn't use Blix, obviously. I used stop bath at just 20 degrees room temperature, like I do for my black and white chems. Uh, for three minutes and 30 seconds, and then I fixed with my Ilford Rapid Fixer for seven minutes. Seven and a half minutes is what I usually fix my black and white film for. Just did the same thing with that. Uh, worked well, and then I just used some photo flow afterwards. I didn't I didn't even use the stabilizer uh, from the color kit. I just used my photo flow uh, quick dunk just so the negatives dry nice and clear. Now, enough of that, guys. Let's jump into the computer and let's go over the results. Okay guys, so what I want to do first is show the images that came directly back uh, from the lab without me doing anything to them. Uh, and they're gonna look pretty funky because I'm the mistake I was talking about earlier was that when I was reading how to do the process and how to develop it, um, pretty much what it said was that process best works when you underexpose the film by one to two stops. I didn't do this, guys. I shot the film at box speed at 50 when I should have shot it at ISO somewhere between 100 or 200 and then develop normally. Uh, and because I didn't, the highlights are massively blown out and a couple of the images are pretty much not usable. Uh, but I did recover a lot of detail in Lightroom from them, You know, brought back the highlights, dropped the exposure and bumped up the contrast a bit. And some of the images look fantastic. Um, but I will go through the raw scans with you guys now, just so you can kind of see what's going to happen if you don't underexpose the film. But anyway, the color palette was cool. So this first image here um, is just a cool scene I saw. And you can see we've got that, you know, that desaturated, uh, grainy look, which is fantastic. You know, it does, you know, it, it is what I was hoping for. Um, this next image is in this back alley here. Same deal, we've got those those muted colors. Uh, you know, it is grainy, but that's why I decided to shoot 120 Cinestill because I knew that it was gonna be grainy because it does say that the process makes the film a bit more grainy and it has less dynamic range. Um, but I thought I'll shoot 120 because that way it'll be grainy, but it won't be as grainy as 35 mil would be. Uh, but you know, a cool scene and I do like the colors. Uh, this photo here, you can just see guys, you know, I was exposing for the shadows like you do with any color film and it just still absolutely completely blew out the sky and a lot of, you know, a lot of the highlights and whites. Uh, I don't really like this next image. I think this was the first one off the roll. Meh, just shot it. It's a bit of a dud. None of these are great, but I just wanted to see if the process would work. This next image here, uh, this little pond area at work, you can just see, um, you know, the colors look great. The greens look great, but yeah, completely... Uh, kind of blown out highlights uh, likewise you know with this image here but you know it's it's got that color palette I was looking for it's just extremely overexposed but you know that's a mistake I made uh, and now if you guys want to try it yourself just remember remember that one uh, this house here you know I just love the colors what it does to the greens it just shifts them a bit um, and it just gives you this otherworldly kind of look you know, like Save a Private Ryan, like Band of Brothers. Uh, oh, another one off the top of my head, if you guys remember watching The Book of Eli with Denzel. Same uh, same process would have kind of been done for that for that film as well. Um, you know, this scene here does look a lot better because maybe I underexposed, uh, underexposed by accident and it came out looking pretty good. Um, now, this scene here, this is what I want to show you guys. I'm going to zoom in here. This was like really, really fall colors here, like really, really dark brown leaves. But when we zoom in, you can actually see these white clipped bits uh, everywhere on the screen. Now, I think that for some reason, like 
not underexposing the film. It's blown out the highlights so much that the, the scanner that the lab has, which is an Aritsu scanner, just couldn't pull any information whatsoever um, out of those areas, unfortunately. Uh, this image here, you can just see, like, we've got that look, that, that apocalyptic, otherworldly look, which, you know, which I was going for with that, those colors, but completely blown out. Uh, likewise here, this you know sandstone archway. If we zoom in again, you can just see the area here where the um, scanner hasn't been able to get any detail. But the colours look fantastic. This is what I was going for, and I'm really pleased with it. Uh, this image here, completely blown out, not usable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this image down at the beach here, like I thought it would be a wicked composition, uh, and it does. It would have looked awesome, especially this guy just about to catch a wave, but blown out unfortunately this one this is what one of the, the lab scanned i must have like i thought i was shooting you know exposing for the shadows i was probably exposing for the you know the rock area here but like there's no information there uh this one's probably one of my favorites um absolute favorites you know just cool scene the colors look fantastic uh, and then this last photo here just looks like another planet you know it could be mars or something just looks fantastic looks fantastic uh but now what i'm going to show you guys is uh the photos that i brought into lightroom my favorites the ones that were semi-recoverable and i brought down the exposure i dropped the highlights and i bumped up the contrast a bit and that was it they're the only tweaks i did and these came out really really cool uh, so you see some of these scenes again you know we've got that color palette that that muted image uh, the back alley scene here just looks much, much better once I drop the exposure. Just such a cool look, such a cool vibe to this photo. Um, this was that pond shot again, but I just wanted to show you guys, once I brought the exposure back, the, what it does with the greens. And I think this is why it looks so good on with Saving Private Ryan and Banded Brothers is because, you know, it was all army guys, you know, army green uniforms and, and stuff and a lot of green uh, and a lot of foliage in in both those movies. You can you know if you remember, and it just does something really cool to the greens. This process it looks great. Uh, this is that old shack again. You can see it's a much better looking image now, but it's just got a cool color palette to it. Really cool. Uh, another shot of that alley. Uh, this one here, you can see I brought back some of the highlights. But if you actually look, see you see these dotted lines. So the scanner obviously just tried, but just couldn't get in, any information. Uh, that archway scene again, brought bringing the exposure down, pretty cool. Uh, but this shot, my favourite shot of the role, this one, this you know this beach scene with the life lifeguard tower down at uh, City Beach, one of my local beaches in Perth, just looks awesome. Like this is exactly what I was going for, colour palette wise, exactly what I wanted. Uh, and hey, only one one shot that came out just like I wanted. But hey, if I'd underexposed the film, they probably all would have come out looking a lot better. But just awesome. Just awesome. And really, really happy with this one. Exactly the, the, the colors, the mood, the time, everything I wanted out of this process is here. It looks great. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. A bit of an alternative processing process for you. Um, you know, like I said multiple times throughout the video, completely blown out highlights. That is my fault for not overexposing, uh, sorry, underexposing the film. Uh, like I said, Cinestill 50D is a 50 speed. I shot it at 50 speed. It should have been 125 to 200, and I reckon the results would have been even better. I would have definitely had more of the look I'm going for, but I know for next time, uh, and it was definitely a fun little experiment um, that worked-ish, uh, but I had fun shooting, uh, and you can't ask for more, to be honest. Definitely going to try this one again, and I hope maybe I've piqued your interest, guys, uh, and you guys get out there and try this one for yourself. So thanks for watching another episode of Shoots with Coops, guys. Happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next one.